And the Bible says, but it came to pass that when Sam Bannett heard that we built the wall, he was in wrath. And it took great, it took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he sped before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, what do these feeble Jews, will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? Now Tobiah and the Ammonites was by him and said, even which they build, if a fox go up, he shall break down their stone wall. And my topic is, God's assignment is not predicated to what man says. So as you, let me pray, because I got to do it right. Dear God, I come to you as humble as I know how. Father, thank you for choosing me. Father, thank you for taking the sins and throwing them to the sea of forgetfulness. And thank you for allowing the devil to be down there with his school again so he can try to bring it up again. Father, thank you for the opportunity. Father, thank you for the purpose. And as I thank you for the purpose, I also thank you for the problem. Father, thank you for keeping me and my family and my sons and my aunt. Thank you, Lord. Who the devil attempts to attack at this point in my life because he knows she means so much to me. But I stand in front of you telling you that you are a liar. And even though you possess the ability, you don't have any power to attack anything that's attached to my blood. Father, thank you for no limit outreach. Father, thank you for bringing them through the eight years. In your son Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Now, as you read through the book of Nehemiah, we always we realize that he had a position in the king's mansion that wasn't a minor position. He was the cupbearer for the king. And anybody who don't know what the cupbearer is, the cupbearer is the person who tastes the food before the king to make sure that it's not poison. Thank you. So he was allowed to maneuver and go through the mansion as he wanted to. And he was so important to the king that his life depended on it. So as you go, when you go, he had a, a visit from some of his friends and they told him that the wall around Jerusalem had got torn down and God placed it in his heart to go back and rebuild it. And when God placed it in his heart, he knew what he meant to the king. So he had to pray that God softened his heart, softened the king's heart to be able to allow him to go. So no matter what he ever, no matter what he went through, whenever he stood in front of the king, he never showed his emotion, except for this one time. And the king said, man, what's the problem? What's going on with you? What's wrong? He said, well, this is what's going on with my kindred. The wall is torn down and God placed it on me to go and rebuild it and I need your permission. And if it pleases the king, you should allow me to go. And the king granted him permission to go. But the problem is sometimes we never realize that even though we get permission, there's always something that has to stop us. And he realized that, so he said, what I need you to do is I need you to give me a letter that when I get to the people outside of your kingdom that they'll continue to let me go through. And not only do I need you to give me a letter for that, I need you to give me a letter to the person who is in control of your force so I can get wood to rebuild the wall and the gates and the houses that I'm living. And the king said, okay. So he goes to he goes and he stays there for three days. And when he goes and prays, stays for three days, he walks around the wall and he never lets anybody know what he's doing and know, never let anybody know what's going on or whatever. So then when he finally sits down, he lets everybody know what's going on and then they get into the process of putting everybody in place for different sections of the wall that he wants them to build. 
But then we always forget that even when we're doing God's work, the devil still got God's permission. <laughs> so verse 1 says, But when it came to pass, that Sam had heard that we build the wall, he was wroth, took great, took great indignation, and he mocked the Jews. And what we have to understand is that a lot of people who don't walk in the same purpose and believe in the same things that we believe in become habitual criticizers. And the habitual criticizer will always stand and watch you do what you do and mock what you do. If I, I would have did it like this, or if I could have done it, I would have done it like that. But they don't never come and stand hand in hand with you and position themselves in the process. They always want to coast the process along, but they never a part of the process. <laughs> and the craziness is that the Western Dictionary say that progress is a forward or onward movement towards a destination. And when we finally give our life to Christ, it's a forward and onward move towards where he wants us to be in our life. Yes. Now, four years ago when I gave my life to Christ, a lot of people didn't think I was ready. A lot of people didn't understand that this is what I was supposed to do. A lot of people didn't understand that my life was actually changing. What people fail to realize is that you change on the inside before you change on the outside. Your heart don't become pure in one day. You just continue to walk and you continue to press and you continue to move forward. And some things fall off, but everything don't fall off. <laughs> it's like sometimes when I talk to my friends, they say, oh man, you with God, you saved you, this, you, that. Everything is supposed to be okay. And I say, well, when you got released from jail, they didn't release you straight to the street. They gave you a parole officer. And with that parole officer, you have to continue to check in once or twice a week depending on how intense your sin or your sin or your crime or your whatever you want to call it was it's always a process in everything that we do and people ain't never going to be able to stop you people ain't never going to be able to change you you just got to keep pushing and keep doing keep doing what you want to do and if I st and if I listen to what people say and continue to be comfortable in the positions that I was in God would have killed me I knew he would have killed me it used to be times I would come to my aunt's house, jump in my car, and wake up in my driveway Jesus. from driving drunk. Jesus. Come on now. But I'm not going to hell because of what somebody else said. Come on, man. And people are always going to murmur. People are always going to do what they want and say what they want to, but we can't get upset because it's something that God promised us. Matthew 10, 22 says, Ye shall be hated by all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. To the end. And if you don't understand what that means, that you got to put on your boots, and you got to put on your camouflage, and you got to put on your breastplate of righteousness, and you got to put on your helmet, and you got to put on your sunshades, and you got to grab your sword, and you got to keep pushing. No matter what the enemy say, no matter what the enemy do, no matter what the enemy try, they are all lies, and they will never prosper. Yeah. 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 Mm. Preach, sir. Verse number two says, he spake before the brethren of the army of Samaria and said, what do the feeble Jew? Thank you, God. Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they receive the stones out of the heap of rubbish which I burn? You have to continue to endure when people question what God asks you. That's right. They gonna ask you, why are you doing that? What's the purpose for you doing it? But the question is, people don't necessarily know that it's a part of your calling. When people don't believe in what you believe, they don't believe in what you see. People with little faith cannot believe in the, can't see the power of the big God. And the crazy thing, they, 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 we can never pay attention to the people who try to put God in a box. Because it's like putting gas in a styrofoam cup. You can't hold it. You got to keep on pushing, keep on praying, keep on working, keep on praising, keep on singing, keep on dancing, yeah. keep on doing what you're doing. They got them looking at you funny until they ask you, can they help? Yeah. Uh -huh. Because it all comes around when you continue to adore and they see that light. Uh -huh. You can't always walk towards the light. Sometimes you got to walk with it. Yeah. <laughs> My grandmother used to always tell me, people going to talk no matter what. 
So if people are going to talk no matter what, then you might as well do what's right. Amen. Yep. Yes. Uh-huh. Because if they're going to talk, the truth so shall show itself. Verse number three say, when Tobiah the Ammonite was with, was by him, and he said, even that which is built, if a fox go up, he shall break down their stone wall. Now when the people are laughing, and the doubters are screaming, and the haters are cheering, yes. Sam Ballard, little friend Tobiah had to come along and help him. Because when one person can't stop the show, people gotta jump. Y'all have to realize that the demons will jump you if they can't beat you one on one. This fight, man, God is so powerful that it takes millions and millions of demons to attack you. Mm. My Lord! Mm-hmm. One demon, you're not fighting against one demon. Come on, now. And the problem is we get caught up with what people say. Yeah. When we don't battle against flesh and blood. Never. We battle against principalities yeah. in the spirit, so the things yeah. that we battle against, we can't see. Yeah. Unless we in the spirit. But if you focus on the flesh, then you're standing outside the spirit. My Lord. My Lord. Thank you, Father. They ain't know they slay me. I will trust him. But I will maintain my ways before him. They're going to criticize you. They're going to criticize your family. They're going to criticize the people you tie to. They're going to criticize what you do. They're going to criticize where you walk. They're going to criticize where you go. They're going to criticize how you talk. They're going to criticize how you rap. They're going to criticize how you preach. They're going to criticize how you speak. They're going to criticize how you dress. They're going to criticize how you drive. They're going to criticize everything thing that you do if you're standing on the promise of God. Criticism. 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 Now? It's false love. Lord wow. Jesus. You have to talk bad about something you like. Uh-huh. Because if you didn't like it, you wouldn't be paying no attention. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. When I turn on my TV, if it's something that I don't want to see, I turn it off. <laughs> it, don't, it don't continue to keep my attention. If I turn it on and I don't want to see it, I ain't going to call you and say, Patty Costa, this show on, man, this is so horrible. <laughs> this, this is just a terrible show. I can't believe why they put this on TV. That's crazy to be talking about something that don't have your attention. That don't make no sense. That's ridiculous. All right, y'all. So we're in closing. In closing. It comes to a point that no matter what people say, no matter what people do, no matter if they understand, it doesn't matter if they think it's right, God calls you to do it. Maintain your footing on him. Sometimes it looks shaky. Sometimes you don't understand it. Sometimes you don't see it. Sometimes you can't see past the calling. Sometimes you can't see past the guilt. Sometimes you can't see past the doubt. Sometimes you can't see past the abuse. Sometimes you can't see past the neglect. But you got to understand that beyond all of that, Yes. He bless you to be where he got you. Thank you, Lord. And no matter what he say, no matter what he do, if you recognize God the power, then you can meet God the person. Then you can realize God's power. And you can betray. Then you can show God's love. It don't never change. Your assignment is not predicated to what nobody say. God called you, and God controlled it. Yes. If he make it all, he control all. Yes. If God made the wall, yes. if God made the Israelites, yes. if God made the rubbish, yes. if God made the stones, then why can't the people of God rebuild it? Yes. It's a crazy, it's an awesome life. Yes. Wow. This is an awesome life. Yes. But sometimes we get fearful in the things that we don't understand. Because we can't see past. We can't see the end. I know where I've been. I know what I've been through. I know what I used to like. It's easier to go back to what I've been through. What I used to like. How I used to do things. Because I know and I understand the consequences and the pleasures of it. It's easy to turn around. The best part is enduring until the end. 
when you endure it for the end and you continue to build strength. Yes. yes. And it ain't even about being physically strong. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> we can do anything. <laughs> we can do all things yes. through Christ who strengthens yes. us. Yes. Your assignment is not predicated by what man says. Woo! I'm finished. Thank you.